and uh, welcome to a rather lovely sunny afternoon in the Midlands. Uh, today is uh, a nice uh, warm Sunday and I've just been dealing with my horses and I have enough time just to uh, take my uh, Modigo TV11 out for a, a quick whiz round before we have to get on and do some work. I'm not quite sure where we're going to go today. I think we'll sort of head out towards Aston Western on Trent. We'll just see how the time goes. Ah, dear. Right, so right here. Another little camera test as well. Just adjusted the... Um, the uh, eye line of it. it on the last test I did it I thought it was just a little bit low so I've moved it up one notch um, for anybody interested this is a, a drift ghost s camera uh, we're recording at 1080p 50 frames per second bit rate high and mic setting is on lowest that's one out of three And uh, just for interest, uh, the helmet it's mounted on is a Schubert S2. Where's all the traffic come from? Why can't we just have a nice quiet ride? Still, it is, I think, just gone one o'clock now. Oh. Every man and his bloody dog. Okay, let's go. Like today, we've got the uh, my Murigo CV11 Le Mans out. I thought it was about time it had a little bit of a run because uh, I haven't had it out since last Sunday, and it's been sitting in the garage quite literally gathering dust. I've been having the uh, the drive rebuilt, and of course they're cutting up all the um, the stone sets. So the garage has become absolutely filled full of dust. So despite having the dust covers on this thing. Both this and my FJR 1300 have been absolutely covered. So I've given it a, a quick sort of wipe down and hopefully a nice quick ride will sort of get rid of the um, the rest of it. It needs a wash anyway so we're not too worried. Yeah, we'll go left here and down towards Shardlow. This is the A6 heading for Derby. And we'll just be coming up to the Cavendish Bridge.
as you can see the clouds are developing quite uh, rapidly I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have some heavy showers this afternoon but it was absolutely lovely this morning very clear just a little bit of low cube building up I have to go down to the old Crown Inn. I've been ages since I've been down there. They live just down over there. They had the dubious uh, distinction of being very close to the river and uh, they tend to suffer from an awful lot of flooding. So uh, I know they've been having a hell of a trouble trying to get insurance for the business. But it is quite a nice little pub. Fairly nuts. This bit of road is 30 mile an hour, believe it or not. Should be 40, but there we go. Take a left here. The old dog and duck. Dog and duck. That's another pub I haven't been in for ages. And finally, we're out on over road. twisty roads around here. The only trouble is the surface is pretty rough. An Italian suspension being what it is, it's a bit firm. Good control, but but you know what's going on. And back down sensible speeds. One nice thing with the, v, the old V11 engines is that they really do run smoothly at low revs. There we go, she's quite happy, 1500 RPM, she'll pull away nicely.
about half a gun hand. Can't resist this, just gotta have a look. Oh, it's an old FJ-12. Very nice. Yeah, didn't see too many of those around anymore, at least not in uh, good condition. Well, it was a lovely bike, the old FJ-12. I must admit, back in the day, I really quite found that really wanted one, but I just couldn't afford it. An open road, make the most of it. Tickle in the throat there. Tell you what, there's a lot of the rapeseed around at the moment. You can just taste it in the air. I'm glad I took the hay fever tablets and whatnot. But even so. Oh, fine, they must be pulling in. Oh, oh yes, there we go. Turning there. Let's go over to Walkston. Crew and a half a pub here. It's Walkston Bridge, principal claim to fame. Bar, 
being a major crossing of the train, so a very ancient one of that. But this was as far south as Bonnie Prince Charlie got in the 1745 rebellion. And I always used to joke to my wife, who was a Scottish, very much into her Scottish history, being a Scot herself, that she, she got as far as the crew in half, I ordered a pint and just saw how expensive it was and said, stop this for a laugh. To which she just used to look at me with a pained expression. <laughs> You know, it's traffic density levels like this really that I think have really killed off the big sports bikes or at least reduced their dominance in Britain. You just can't use them. And simply the roads just, they're just too crowded. Even this thing with a mere 75 horsepower has just got just too, you know, you can't really use it. I mean, uh, you can, and certainly with the state of the roads, you can see why the uh, we've seen the rise and rise of the adventure bikes. I'm somewhat restricted in buying one of those simply because I've got relatively short legs. down towards Tonington Park. Get him. Ah, contraplay system. Oh, here we go. Lights changing already. What we're doing now is we're just skirting around the northern edge of uh, Melbourne, uh, which is a village just to the um, to the west of uh, Donington Race Park. We'll be going up the back of Donington in a bit.
Whoa, just been through 12,000 miles on this bike. Just slipped through 12. Which, is, when you think about it, the bike is 14 years old, is a bit absurd, but. Um, makes it below a thousand miles a year which is not surprising really because last year for instance it hardly got ridden at all because my left wrist was da got damaged and I just couldn't work a clutch and all the rest of the time I've always had a few other bikes in the garage so this has been sort of just taken out and just used for, as a little, for a little bit of fun now where are these guys Ah, Sunday market, that's it. Off we go. So we're just uh, at the back of Castle Donington racetrack at the moment. Camera still working? Yep, still recording. Yeah, it just beeped a few minutes ago, so I think it just uh, hit the fi hit max file size and it just started another file. It's always a bit worrying. Oh, old SV650. an event on. Ah, great. We still can get through this way, can't we? Mm. Alright, there's the market site, so obviously there is some racing as well. Don't quite know what's going on today, mind, but a good, it's obviously uh, a bit of bike racing. Oh dear. Tell you what, my wrists are hurting today. I've been was uh, busy doing quite a bit of gardening the last few days, pulling some uh, old tree stumps out of the back of the garden. Ah, oh. that was hard work. And it certainly hasn't done my wrists any good. The trouble is, it starts to bring on the arthritis in the thumbs and that. So that's why we can't really go too far with this bike today. So if it's still nice this evening, I might take the FJR up. Right, hello, what's happened here? Bummer dude. Oh, I see, counterflow. Rope works. Yep. No worries. Oh, that's okay.
the axe head again another excellent pub we are quite blessed with various uh, hostilities around this neck of the woods I must admit my FJ is quite a bit more comfy to ride than this one mostly because you have much more upright riding stance and also the suspension is very soft and it's quite nice and soft and that's with a set of hyper pro springs up front and that you've just got so much weight in it it's so good that the um, it just soaks up the road I mean it you can still feel exactly what's going on but this is typical Italian you know firm well damped you can feel exactly what's going on it's very nice but we'll just pop round a little bit of splitting there that's good gearbox on these gazzies is very nice quite long throw uh, by if you're used to Japanese bikes about the same as I think when you get off a BM, although I haven't ridden a modern BM for a very, very long while. Probably in terms of throw, not too different to a Harley, but a lot, lot smoother and a lot, lot quieter. I mean, I had a 2000 Superglide Sport, which was really nice, but that transmission, once it got hot, Ah, oh, second to third, and th sounded like you had driven it home with a sledgehammer. It just did not matter how you shifted gear. It was positive. Let's put it that way. It was lovely when it was uh, the oil was cold, but that sort of like, just obviously damped it, the movement out. I would have actually loved to have tried that gearbox with the gearbox oil I'm currently running in this in this one. Uh, because in the oil, because he's, uh, well certainly this when it originally came out, you used standard EP8090 gear oil uh, for the transmission gearbox and the bevel drive, the final drive box down the back. But for the final drive box you had to put a, um, a molybdenum sulfite additive. Now the stuff I'm running now, you don't need that. Uh, so it's obviously got enough goodies in it to handle the high loads as it stands. But of course, it also means you got that in the gearbox, and that really did smoothen this up quite noticeably. So I really would have loved to have tried it in that Harley gearbox just to see whether it made any difference. Oh well, never mind. That was another one that got sold primarily because I didn't use it enough, and the insurance was very, very expensive. You know, whereas this thing, oh, cost me about 75, 80 pounds, and I've got it on the same policy as the FJR, and it's about 200 pounds per year fully comp, so can't really bitch about, at that. I do hope we haven't picked up a large fly on the camera lens. I did that last time, it was so annoying, but there's nothing you can do. Unless somebody comes up with those little tear strips, you know, like you get for visors that the racers use. Get that for the camera, so every now and again you just tear one off. I don't know, somebody might make them, you don't know.
that's the trouble, you know, here you are sat down behind everybody, you're at 40 mile an hour and there's just no room to really do any overtaking and frankly no point because you're not going to get anywhere any quicker. Not that we're in a hurry. But here we go, this is interesting, here we are at uh, 40 in Acadia, which in the real world, judging for the GPS, is about uh, 36, 37, and we're just turning about 1800 RPM in top, so it's very low revs. I mean the engine is red light at 8, and you've got the amber starting at 7, but there's no point in revving it anywhere near that. Anything much beyond 6, you're, you know, the power's dying away. But it's not surprising, you know, big 1100cc V-twin push rods, 2 valve per cylinder, it's never going to be a rift machine. Need to do the brake fluid on this. It's been, uh, I meant to do it this week, but I just did not seem to ever have enough time. And anyway, when the building work was going on, I did not want dust going everywhere and getting into the brake reservoir, which would somewhat defeat the object of the exercise of putting clean fluid in. It's no big deal, it's only three years old. I know it should have, it should have been changed last, well, over this winter, but it just did not happen. Right, let's go left of the nag's head. I've got that Range Rover going for five grand. Hmm. I wonder what the mileage on it is. Now we'll take a little dive up here. Right, nearly home. Well guys, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll catch up with you later. Bye. Well guys, couldn't not give you a good look at the bike. She is pretty, isn't she? Even if she does need a wash. Right, well I suppose I better to go wait for her to cool down and then I'll do that then. Right, bye guys, bye.